Hello, my friends. Welcome to the uh, Web API tutorial series. So this will be the second video of the Web API uh, series. Uh, if you haven't seen the first one, I strongly advise you to go to the first video, which which I have put a link below in the description section, because this one is actually on top of of the first one. So please go to the first one, and you will be able to understand this one better. So without further ado, let's move to the our first uh, uh, where we actually left over in the first video. So as you can remember, we created the uh, post method at the end of the first video, and we did a sample demonstration here using the postman tool to do a post to our action and. Uh, uh, and we got some results <laughs> and as I promised at the end of the first video um, I I'm going to show you the uh, other methods as well uh, get put and delete and also I was thinking uh, at the end of the first video I promised that I'm going to use the entity framework the core entity framework module but I guess uh, maybe I'll use it in this next one. For now, I'll, I'm going to show you how to use the memory cache because we want to have a some kind of a store to store this data. So it can be either in the back end or in the cache. So for the demonstration purpose, I'll show you the how you can implement this uh, solution using memory cache. And then we can easily port it to the backend using Entity Framework. <coughs> so in order to enable the memory cache module, and the cool thing is about .NET Core is it in it has inbuilt memory cache uh, middleware. So you go to the startup, and uh, you can enable it like services dot uh, add memory cache. So this command will enable the memory cache module. <coughs> Uh, and this is not a distributed caching. I'll do a separate video on how you can use distributed cache. So because this one is on the uh, on the in process module, the cache. So if you have a load balancer environment with two web servers or more than two, uh, you might run into problems. So the solution is to use distributed cache at the back end using SQL Server or any other database to manage the uh, caching but for this one it's just the memory cache and we'll see how we can implement so in our controller what we can do is when we get a request to create we can create create the object and put it the memory and return the success to the customer so in order to use the memory cache module uh, we need to use the memory cache uh, we need to use the memory cache, so we have to get it from the interface. Um, for, for for your understanding, I think I'll change this to product because we are using the products. So this will be product controller. I'll change this to product controller so it's you all can understand it better and it's easy to access the memory cache interface for in .NET Core. All you have to do is um, we can use I memory cache interface and just um, get it here. The cool thing about .NET Core is it have it handles the dependency injection automatically. So all you have to do is constructor you create the object like that. That's it. Then you can access this and you can use all the inbuilt functionalities. So you can just set 
and you can put a key. In our case, we'll use the key as the product ID and the object is uh, product. So what what uh, what's going to happen is when you when we get the signal to create this product. So assume that we we have some uh, business logic here to validate the request and create the product object and everything, and then we save it to the database. But here, instead of saving to the database, I just save it to the memory and we can just send the success command back to the client so we don't need to send anything we just say okay we created the object we save it to the database in here we create the object save it to the uh, memory and the client will get success 200 http 200 so i'll do a quick demo here so i'll just quickly build the project okay let's see what's going to happen Oh, sorry, I think we have to change the to store sorry, product. It has to be products according to the uh, best practices. So we are this is actually a restful uh, web API. So we are using the standard uh, restful standards where you call the products and then the each product so it will be products then the product id like this will be this Now let's see. <coughs> okay, so we got 200. That means our product has been uh, our product has been saved to the memory. So if I were to get this product now <coughs> by ID, we can access and we can return. So what we have to do is we can use um, product object here things in the models product then we can access create the object here we can use from the memory to get so you can actually specify the type here as well and then you use the key so key is ID and then I can do the return uh, product so we need to say 200 success and then the product so now what should happen is <coughs> our product ID is 1 and if I access 1 and you should hit this request here, uh, this endpoint action. And the, we are accessing it from the, so this is actually assuming we are accessing it from uh, DB. And we are returning it to the client. So if I build the project, and if I were to access it like this, I'll create another method. It's a get our uh, product ID is one. All of this needs to come here like this, and let's send the signal. Okay, what happened? Okay, something is not right, so let's find out what is 
why it's not actually understand the request. So it's a get request and we need to send the ID which we are sending. Let's run the project and see why it's not hitting here. So this values coming from still is coming from the values because it's, uh, it's the I start up here the configuration file here. Sorry, um, the launch. So this needs to get changed to products. And now if you refresh, you will see the default is uh, products. Yep, and then if I send one, okay, it actually hit the request, uh, the controller action, then we'll debug. Yep, okay, so, so the product it cannot actually access, it, so it's not in the very okay. I know what happened because we stop the serve and restart, and that's what happened. So let's create it first again. ID one test. Let's send this to the server. Okay, and let's step two. Okay, we add this product to the cache. Return. Okay. Okay, all good. Two hundred. Then we'll go to the next one. We have the get request, and we want to access the. We want to get product one. Okay, it says bad request. So if I click the preview, dangerous request path value was detected. Okay, what will happen if I go from the browser? Okay. Okay, we can access actually. I think I'm uh, missing with the URL. Let me try this again. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I, I guess my URL was wrong. So as you can see, now you can access the first product from the memory, but we can actually change it to backend later. So this is how you can actually uh, create objects using the memory cache, and you can access them later. So <clears throat> I think I'll uh, stop for now, and um, I'll use this, uh, I'll, uh, I'll uh, continue in the, uh, third video and I'll show you guys how you can do the you can use put and delete and once we are confident and once you guys know how to play with the uh, object request types and uh, server and client side uh, mechanism mechanisms we can move into the back end and I'll show you how you can use entity framework core and how we can do this exact thing using the entity framework and how you can communicate back and forth I, I hope you guys enjoy this uh, video and if you guys have any questions or any concerns, please put some comments down below and I would be happy to look into those things and get back to you guys. Uh, and once again, uh, thanks for the support and have a good day. Uh, thank you.